Well, I've left my shop in Maryland, packed up a minimal toolkit, and headed to the woods of Southport Island, just north of Portland, Maine. And I went back to work on the dining table every morning. I wandered down this little wooded path to the two-car garage on the property that I managed to turn into a pretty effective little wood shop. And I think it proved that with a very small toolkit and whatever space you can come up with, you can build pretty nice furniture. Let's take a look around at the shop. As you can see, once the doors are open, there's not much to show for it, but I've managed to take this uh, sawhorse and this little table and screw them down to the floor so I'm not chasing around while I'm playing. And it makes a pretty decent workbench. I can't really do a lot of face work, but right now I'm just needing to do edge joining, so it works out really nicely. Got a shelf up here, starting to hang some tools here and there, and I've got all kinds of space over here to set up some tools as needed. But what's really cool is the view out the window. The tide's starting to come in right now. So I'm looking out onto the little uh, gut there, but it's pretty awesome. I got a nice breeze flowing through both of these windows out into the garage doors. Before I left Maryland, I drilled and pegged the top bridle joint on these legs. Now I just want to pair these off, and rather than make them flush, I decided I want to go ahead and leave them a little bit proud, just to give you a little tactile sense. So I'm using a chair maker's trick I picked up building Windsor chairs, where you just use the chisel, bevel down, and it leverages off the back of the bevel, and that's your fulcrum, and you get this really easy pyramidal peg. In my rush to get everything ready to take up to Maine, I did not film the creation of this first mortise. And that's okay, because you're gonna see the second one. The hard part is actually laying it out. And if you remember those bevels that we used to lay the angles for the half lap and on the ends of the leg, use those same settings to position this mortise directly in the center of the square that's formed by that half lap. Using those bevel angles, I was able to transfer that all the way around to the other face and thereby being able to do a through mortise. Once that one was done, it was just a matter of knifing through to the leg on the underside. I positioned both legs up against the wall so that they were level, in other words, level with the floor. Then once I knifed through, I drilled out a bunch of holes just using my auger bit. You can see the edges of the holes here. And it was a matter of just chiseling my way back to the line, working from both sides of the mortise right up to the knife lines. And once I'd gotten about halfway through from one side, flipped the whole thing over and chopped through from the other side. As the tide begins to ebb out the window, I turn my sights to the trestle. This is a massive three inch by six inch by 60 inch long piece of walnut that's gonna span the underside of the table. First thing I wanna do is cut the tenons. So with a little first class saw cut to really get an exactly defined shoulder because this is gonna be visible. Frankly, people are gonna to wanna to look at this joint. At least I hope they are. So I use my chisel to create this little first class wall that will help to guide my back saw as I begin to cut. A nice deep knife line makes this a lot easier. Now you can almost close your eyes to start this cut. The saw just drops right down in, and it's a relatively shallow cut. The cheek is only 3 16 of an inch thick. First though, I'm gonna cut the wider shoulders just because this is gonna leave a lot less material to saw away when I make the long cheek cuts. The tenon, once it's freed from this, is going to be two and a half inches wide, almost four and a half inches long, and just under three inches thick. Now you can see there's quite a bit smaller surface to saw out the long cheek cuts. And I'm just going to observe the normal tenon practice, where I'll saw from one end, working across the end grain, and then down the edge grain, switch to the other side and repeat. Finally, once I've gotten to the end of both sides, there's a little V in the middle, and I just saw right down to the baseline until the cheek pops away. 
Now it's time for a dry fit. You want this joint to go together relatively easily because this table is meant to be knocked down. It will be secured in place with wedges later. So that last little inch of the tenon I made just a little bit tighter so that it kind of snaps into place. Now I'll just slide the other leg on and again it starts to slide in easy and it gets just a little bit harder right up against the shoulder. And there's our trestle. While I've got the trestle in place, I want to locate the wedge mortise. So make sure the leg is pushed tight up against the trestle shoulder and just use a pencil to trace around that opening to mark the location of the wedge mortise. So speaking of the wedge, the next best step is to create the wedge because I'll use its shape to create the mortise. The angle on here is not important. It's an eight inch long wedge that goes from a half an inch at the bottom to one and a half at the top. I'm going to smooth it to its final shape. Again, the final shape of the wedge will determine the shape of our mortise, so it's best to get it completely smoothed out the way you want it. I went ahead and rounded over all the edges as well. And there's a bunch of ways you could do this. I could certainly saw them round, but just creating chamfers and removing the arises from each one of those chamfers until you've got a smooth round over is really it's kind of a fun way to do it. So now I want to mark an eighth of an inch in from that line I traced once I had the trestle assembled. This is the offset. This is going to ensure that when the wedge is driven in, it pulls the leg up real tight against the trestle. And I want to move this one eighth inch offset and transfer it all the way around the tenon. Now I'll lay the wedge in place. And you notice there's a white line on my wedge that marks three inches up from the bottom. I'll line that line up with the bottom of the tenon and line the back or the flat side of the wedge up against my eighth inch offset line and mark the front face. This is the shape of my mortise. I'll transfer that all the way around the tenon, set a marking gauge to the thickness of my wedge and complete the layout of the mortise. I'll do this on both sides and the smaller side, the bottom, is now defined as well. Now it's just a matter of drilling and chopping it out. Now just like any through joinery, I want to drill through from both sides. So I'm going to start on the smaller, the narrower part of the uh, wedge and drill on through. And I'm drilling vertically, just working on that straight wall rather than trying to match an angle. And since this mortise is small enough, I'm just going to go straight vertical and pair in that angle. So with a mortise chisel, I'm just gonna remove those inside corners and focus on getting the vertical part of the mortise perfectly flat and vertical. And then using a bench chisel and sighting down the line on the edge of my tenon, I'm gonna chisel in that ramp or the angle of this wedge mortise. And if you use the right size drill bit, most of the waste is gone, so it doesn't take a lot of effort to match that angle. And then I'll just pair it to the exact right fit. Again, just sighting down that line on the edge of the tenon is really all you need to do. And then that is the fit we're looking for. It comes up perfectly tight and you can feel the solid fit you get. If it's not perfectly fit, you'll feel it wiggle a little. And here's the real test. When you assemble it together, listen to the sound as it comes home. It's nice and sturdy. Just as a test, Yep, that'll do.